Hello, I'm Michael Carnes at Exponential Audio. I'd like to take a few minutes and explain a few things about early reflections in Phoenix Verb Surround and R2 Surround. Now, if you play with the different presets, you'll find there are a lot of, of things that happen with the early reflections that are useful. But it also helps to know exactly what's going on so that you can do your own programming when you need to. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about how I've set this demonstration up. You won't hear anything, uh, but I think I'll be able to get my point across. I've got a mono signal and I'm panning it around. I'll have a dry signal for just a little bit. And you can see the meters on the plug-in as I pan the signal around. So you'll see how the signal is panned. All right. So now I'll bring up some reverb. Now it's important to point out that reverb in all cases is distributed fully around the surround field uh, in a natural sort of way. But I'm going to focus just on the early reflections, so I'm going to turn the reverb all the way down and we'll just have early reflections. I'm already over here on the early page and you can see what's going on there. Now just in case you aren't familiar with the with the basic parameters which are also on the stereos I have the early attack left to right is time so this is the earliest reflection and this is the latest uh, you can see this way the later reflections are louder in this case the earlier reflections are louder and here they're evenly distributed this is the amount of time that it takes from the first to the very last reflection. This goes out twice as far as in the stereo reverb. Now that's more useful for exteriors than anything else, but you should be aware of that. The final thing is the early slope, which is more, one of the more subtle parameters in exponential audio reverbs. It's basically a low pass filter on the later reflections and it's something of a model of air absorption. If you need a very subtle way to create a little bit more distance, bringing this down is one good way to get that done. Okay, so that's the basic stuff. Um, now, one other thing to know is the way that these are distributed. Generally, the earliest reflections come from wherever the source comes in. So in this particular case, it's coming in the center channel, so the earliest reflections will be there. The later reflections will be naturally distributed along these farther away channels. And then finally, in this case, the farthest channels from center, uh, the left and, and right rears, will be the last things to come out. Of course, the pattern is much more complex than that, but that's essentially the way that things are distributed. Now you'll also see that there are several different patterns that we can choose from. Uh, the, there are a set of fairly natural ones. Really just about any of these can be used for rooms and things like that because real rooms have and concert halls have all sorts of patterns. Uh, the exteriors, as you can see, are clustered in a more irregular way, so they're more useful for exteriors, but that's certainly not the only thing they can be used for. Uh, we have these slaps. These are definitely not good for musical applications. They are for rooms with slap backs and reflections and all the ugly sort of stuff that you're, ch uh, you're typically trying to get in dialogue replacement and things like that. So these have a definite character to them. They're useful, but you have to be careful. All right, alongside those particular choices is the density. Uh, basically, I'm in the, in the case of even, I'm distributing power in a fairly natural way, you know, based on whatever I've set that attack to be. In the sparse modes, all the reflections are still there, but Several of them are weak, and the remaining ones are stronger. Uh, the choppies, again, these are actually fairly useful for natural situations and for rooms. So again, you can experiment with, with that, generally by doing what I've done, turning the reverb level down, and then playing with these and seeing what you like. But the real one I want to focus on now is this early distribution, because that's sort of the hardest to explain. 
I'm going to roll it right back here to mono and let's take a look at what's going on. As you can see my signal is coming into the center channel here and all of the early reflections are coming from the center channel. If I pan elsewhere, if I pan over to the left front, all the reflections are coming out of there. Same thing, I'm in a 7.1 right now by the way. Uh, if I go to the sides or to the rears, you can see the reflections always come out of the same channel they went in on. This is probably most useful for center channel stuff and it actually comes from the uh, number of conversations that I had with dialogue mixers. Uh, especially in the case of a complex mix, you're really trying to keep a center focus. Uh, other stuff is going on in the other speakers around the room. So this can be helpful in focusing that. Now because all of the reflections are in that one place, you might find that it's actually useful to turn that level down just a little bit. Uh, but that's up to you. It really depends on the situation. So that's the first mode, the mono distribution. Move up to the next mode, what, what I call wide mono, and you can see what's going on. I'm, I'm coming in the center channel and I have reflections in the center but I also have them on left and right. If I move over to the left channel, my source is coming in the left channel and now output is coming from left, center, and left side. If I move on down, you'll see that essentially what is going on is that the reflections are coming out of the channel they went in on and the adjacent channels. This again comes more from uh, Foley mixers than any than anyone else, but it can be useful in any case. It's focused. It's not quite as focused as the pure mono thing, but it still helps you keep your reflections, the control of the reflections, where the action is. If you've got a complex mix and lots of stuff going on all around the room, sometimes it helps to keep that stuff right where you want it. It's probably time to point out once again that all the reverb energy is distributed fully around the room. This is just a matter of what happens with the early reflections, which are your strongest indication of where things are. If I move up to left-right, you'll see what's going on now is that wherever the signal comes in, the reflections happen in the left-right plane where that is. So I'm coming in on a side channel. All of my reflections are on left side and right side. Now again, because the, the source is on the left side, the later reflections will be on the right side. But other than that, it's a, f it's a flat distribution along that plane. Now why that's helpful is in cases where you've got something going on in the front and something going on in the back or the side and you want to keep some separation there. This helps keep the presentation in the in the plane you want and helps you distinguish between the part of your mix that you want up front and the part that you want in the back. The next thing is front back which now keeps things along the front back plane where the signal is. So now I'm going in the right front, all of my reflections are along the right side and as long as I'm on that plane everything stays there. Move over to the left side, all of those things are along there. This kind of gives you an exaggerated width. Uh, it's useful, actually turns out that it can be useful for score. Uh, it can be useful for uh, anything that you want to have that sense of, of width. You, you've got something moving from side to side. This will sort of accentuate that placement there. And then finally we have the full surround which is a natural distribution of where the reflective energy goes. I'm coming in the right front here. Things are distributed in an appropriate time basis over the whole field. This is most useful for score. Uh, it can be also very helpful in a situation where the mix is less dense. You've got some foliage, or some dialogue and you can afford to use the whole room uh, for that part of the mix. It's, it's a natural sense uh, and it 
it works in those cases. So that's really what all this early reflection stuff is all about. So thank you very much for your time and best wishes to all of you.